So, hello guys. Uh, the assigned topic in group 7 is Dramatic Design of Highway Facilities. So, Dramatic Design of a Highway deals with the dimensions and layout of visible features of the highway such as horizontal and vertical alignments, side distances, and intersections. The geometrics of highway should be designed to provide efficiency in traffic operation with maximum safety at reasonable cost. So this is my assigned topic, the factors influencing highway design. So there are many factors influence the highway design. First is the functional classification. Design are the traffic volume and vehicle mix. Next is design speed. Design vehicle, cross section of the highway such as lanes, shoulder and medians. Presence of heavy vehicles on steep grades. Next is the topography of the area that the highway traverses. Next is level of service, available funds, safety, and social and environmental factors. So these factors are often interrelated. For example, design speeds depends on functional classification which is usually related to expected traffic volume. In addition, the design speed may also depend on the topography, particularly in cases where limited funds are available. So, let's discuss first the highway functional classification. Highways are classified according to their functions in terms of the service they provide. Also, the highways and streets are categorized as rural or urban roads, depending on the area in which they are located. So, this classification is, very, is necessary because Urban and rural areas have significantly different characteristics with respect to the type of land use and population density which in turn influences travel patterns. In addition, within the classification of urban and rural, highways are categorized into the following groups. First is the principal arterials, the minor arterials, major collectors, minor collectors, and local roads and streets. So, nabantayan ninyo wala ang, wala ang freeways. So, because freeways are not listed as a separate functional class since they are generally classified as part of the principal arterial system. So, first, uh, we discuss about the urban principal arterial system. So, this system of highways serve the major activity centers of the urban area consist mainly of the highest traffic volume corridors. Highways are divided into three subclasses. First is the interstate, with fully controlled access and grade separated interchanges. Second is the expressways, which have controlled access but may also include at grade intersections. The last one is the other principal arterials with partial or no controlled access. So this is the schematic illustration of the functional classes for a suburban route network. So I provide the legend, the arterial street, the commercial area, the local street, collector street, and the public area. Next is the urban minor arterial system. This system serves trips of moderate length and places, more emphasis on land access than the primary arterial system. The spacing of minor arterial streets in fully developed areas is usually not less than 1 mile, but the spacing can be 2 to 3 miles in suburban fringes. The third classification is the urban collector street system. The main purpose of streets within the system is to collect traffic from local streets in residential areas or in CBDs and convey it to the arterial system. The last is the urban local street system. 
This system consists of all, of all other streets within the urban area that are not that are not included in the in the three system described earlier. Through traffic is discouraged on the streets. So like the urban, the rural principal arterial system. So this system consists of a network of highways that serves most of the interstate trips and a substantial amount of intrastate trips. Next is the rural minor arterial system. This system of roads augments the principal arterial system in the formation of a network of roads that connect cities, large towns, and other traffic generators such as large resorts. So this is the schematic illustration of the functional classes for a suburban road network. So nasa chai legend, the cities and towns, village, arterials, collectors, and locals. Next is the rural collector system. Highways within this system carry traffic primarily within individual countries and trip distances are usually shorter than those on the arterial roads. This system divided into major collector roads and minor collector roads. First, so rural major collector system. Roads under the system carry traffic primarily to and from country seats and large cities that are not directly served by the arterial system. The second one is the Rural Minor Collector System. This system consists of roads that collect traffic from local roads and convey it to other facilities. So the last is the Rural Local Road System. This system consists of all roads within the rural area, not classified within the other systems. So next factor is the design early volume. This projected early volume that is used for design. This volume is usually taken as a percentage of the expected ADT or the average daily traffic on the highway. So this is the relationship between peak R and annual average daily traffic and rural. So up a vertical maong early traffic within the percentage of ADT, then a horizontal is the hours in one year with early volume greater than shown. So this curve shows that between 0 and 20 of the hours with the highest traffic volumes, a small increase in that number of hours results in a significant reduction in the percentage ADT. Whereas, a relatively large increase in number of hours greater than the 13th highest hour results in only a slight decrease in the, in the percentage of the ADT. The next factor is the design speed. Design speed defined as a selected speed to determine the various geometric features of the roadway. It depends on the functional classification of the highway, the topography, of the area in which the highway is located and the land use of the adjacent area. Design speed range from 20 miles per hour to 70 miles per hour with intermediate value of 5 miles per hour increments. Freeways are designed for 60 miles per hour to 70 miles per hour. For arterial roads range from 30 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour. So, the a classification of topography. First is the level terrain. It is relatively flat. Horizontal and vertical sight distances are generally long or can be achieved without much construction difficulty or major expense. Next is the rolling terrain. It has natural slopes that often rise above and fall below the highway grade with occasional steep slopes that restrict the normal vertical and horizontal alignments. The last classification of topography is the mountainous terrain. It has sudden changes in ground elevation in both the longitudinal and transverse directions, 
thereby requiring frequent hillside excavations to achieve acceptable horizontal and vertical alignments. So, so in 15.1, minimum design speeds for rural collector roads. So, in any type of terrain, the level, the rolling, and the mountainous with designation design speed, mile per hour for specified design volume, vehicle per day. So, sa table 15.2, na sa minimum design speeds for various functional classifications. So, ang design speed is selected to achieve a desired level of operation and safety on the highway. It is one of the first parameters selected in the design process because of its influence on the other design variables. Uh, additionally, a design speed nagadepende lang na siya sa functional classification o sa topography. So, the next factor is the design vehicle. Design vehicle it is used to determine critical design features such as radi at intersections and turning roadways as well as highway grades. Its weight, dimensions, and operating characteristics are used to establish the design standards of the highway. The following guidelines apply when selecting a design vehicle. First is when a parking lot or a series of parking lot are the main traffic generators the passenger car may be used. Next is for the design of intersections at local streets and park loads, a single unit track may be used. Next is at intersections of state highways and city streets that serve buses with relatively few large tracks, a city transit bus may be used. Next is at intersections of highways and low-volume country highways or township local roads with less than 480T, either an 84-passenger large school bus 40 feet long or a 65-passenger conventional bus 36 feet long may be used. The selection of this will depend on the expected usage of facility. Next is at intersections of freeway ramp terminals and arterial crossroads, and at intersections of state highways and industrialized streets that carry high volumes of traffic. The minimum size of the design vehicle should be WB-20. Next factor is the cross-section elements. The principal elements of a highway cross-section consist of the travel lanes, shoulders, and medians for some multi-lane highways. The marginal elements include median and roadside barriers, curbs, gutters, guardrails, sidewalks, and side slopes. One of the cross-section elements is the width of travel lanes. It is vary from 9 to 12 feet. Most arterials have 12 feet travel lanes since the extra cost for constructing 12 feet lanes over 10 feet lanes is usually offset by the lower maintenance cost of shoulders and pavement surface, resulting in a reduction of wheel concentrations at the pavement edges. On two lanes, two-way rural roads, lane widths of 10 feet or 11 feet may be used, but two factors must be considered when selecting a lane width less than 12 feet wide. When pavement surfaces are less than 22 feet, the crash rates for large trucks tend to increase and as the lane width is reduced from 12 feet, the capacity of a highway significantly decreases. The lane widths of 10 feet are therefore used only on low speed facilities. Lanes that are 9 feet wide are used occasionally in urban areas if traffic volume is low and there are extreme right of way constraints. Another element is the shoulders. It is to provide an area along the highway for vehicles to stop 
when necessary. Shoulder surfaces range in width from 2 feet on minor roads to 12 feet on major arterias. The usable width is the same as the graded width when the side slope is equal to or flatter than 4 is to 1, horizontal to vertical, as the shoulder break is usually rounded to a width between 4 feet and 6 feet. When a vehicle stops on the shoulder, it is desirable for it to be at least 1 feet and preferably 2 feet from the edge of pavement. When highways having a large number of trucks and on highways with heavy traffic volumes and high speed, the shoulder widths should be at least 10 feet. A minimum shoulder width of 2 feet may therefore be used on the lowest types of highways, but 6 feet to 8 feet widths should, prefer should preferably be used. When pedestrians and bicyclists are permitted, the minimum shoulder width should be 4 feet. The width for usable shoulders within the median for divided arterials having two lanes in each direction may be reduced to 3 feet since drivers rarely use the median shoulder for stopping on these roads. As you can see in the picture, the shoulder is pointed out. So on shoulder is along the way as a highway. Then kita po na to ang median strip, ang carriageway, ang ditch, ang subways, ang base horse, o ang subgrade. So next cross section is the medians. It is the section of a divided highway that separates the lanes in opposing direction. The width of a median is the distance between the edges of the inside lanes, including the median shoulders. Median widths vary from a minimum of 4 to 8 feet more. A minimum width of 10 feet is recommended for use on 14 urban freeways, which are adequate for two 4 feet shoulders and a 2 feet median barrier. A minimum of 22, preferably 26 feet, is recommended for 6 or more lanes of freeway. Median widths for urban collector streets vary from 2 to 4 feet, depending on the median treatment. For narrow race or curb areas, 2 to 6 feet medians are required, and for curb sections, 16 to 40 feet. Medians providing a recovery area for out-of-control vehicles, separating opposing traffic, Providing stopping areas during emergencies. Providing storage areas for left turning and U turning vehicles. Providing refuge for pedestrians. Reducing the effect of headlight glare. Providing temporary lanes and crossovers during maintenance operations. Can either be raised, flash, or depressed. So, Raised medians is frequently used in urban arterial streets because they facilitate the control of left turn traffic at intersections by using part of the median width for left turn only lanes. Next is the flash medians, can also be used on freeways but with a median barrier. To facilitate drainage of surface water, the flash median should be crowned. Last is the depressed medians, generally used on freeways and are more effective in draining surface water. A side slope of 6 is to 1 is suggested for depressed medians, although a slope of 4 is to 1 may be adequate. So this is now some examples. Or pictures of the race mijan, the flash mijan, and the pesh, depression mijan. So there have a differences between the three mijans. So the roadside and mijan barriers. 
Median barrier is defined as a longitudinal system used to prevent an errant vehicle from crossing the portion of a divided highway separating the traveled ways for traffic in, oppo in opposite directions. Roadside barriers protect vehicles from obstacles or slopes on the roadside. So this is the some example or picture of the median barrier and the roadside barrier. So next is the curbs and gutters. Curbs are raised structures made of either Portland cement concrete or bituminous concrete or rolled asphalt curbs that are mainly on urban highways to delineate pavement edges and pedestrian walkways. Curbs are also used to control drainage, improve aesthetics, and reduce right of way. In other side, gutters or drainage ditches are usually located on the pavement side of a curb to provide the principal drainage facility for the highway. Gathers are sloped to prevent any hazard to traffic, and they usually have gross slopes of five to eight percent and are one to eight and one to six feet wide. Also, gutters can be designed as V-type sections or as broad, flat, rounded sections. Next is the guard rays. It is longitudinal barriers placed on the outside of sharp curbs and at sections with high fields. They are installed at embankments higher than 8 feet and when shoulder slopes are greater than 4 is to 1. Shapes commonly used include W-beam and axe beam. So, this, uh, this is the some example or picture for guardrails and curbs and gutters. Next is the sidewalks. It is usually provided on roads in urban areas, but are uncommon in rural areas. It should have a minimum clear width of 4 feet in residential areas and a range of 4 to 8 feet in commercial areas. Next cross-section is the cross slopes, pavements on straight sections of two-lane and multi-lane highways without medians are sloped from the middle downward to both sides of the highway, resulting in a transverse or cross slope with a cross-section shape that can be curved, plain, or, or a combination of the two. Recommended rates of cross slopes are 1.5 to 2% for high-type pavements and 2 to 6% for low-type pavements. The advantage of sloping the pavement in each direction is that surface water is quickly drained away from the traveled roadway during heavy rainstorms, whereas the disadvantage is that additional drainage facilities such as inlets and underground rains are required. So, the basic cross slope arrangement for divided highways so nasa is designation of road roadside regions but before that in determining the rate of cross slope for design two conflicting factors should be considered so in the in designation of roadside regions uh, about the hinge point so the hinge point should be rounded since it is potentially hazardous and may cause vehicles to become airborne while crossing it, resulting in loss of control of the vehicle. The two of slope is rounded out is rounded up in order to facilitate the safe movement of vehicles from the fore slope to the back slope. So next cross section is the side slopes. It it is provided on embankments and fields to provide stability for earthworks also serve as a safety feature 
by providing a recovery area for out-of-control vehicles. Slopes of 3 to 1, horizontal to vertical, or flatter are generally used for high embankments. So this is the guide for earth slope design. So height of cut or fill, nakafit siya, flat or rolling, na siya equation proportion given, moderately steep, then steep. Next cross section is the right of way. It is the total land area acquired for the construction of a highway. The right of way for two lane urban collector st streets should be between 40 and 60 feet, whereas the desirable minimum for two lane arterials is 84 feet. Right of way widths for undivided four lane arterials vary from 64 to 108 feet, whereas for divided arterials they range from about 120 to 300 feet. So this is the picture about the right, the right of way. Next cross section is the maximum highway grades. The selection of maximum grades for a highway depends on the design speed and the design vehicle. It is generally accepted that grades of 45% have little or no effect on, pas on passenger cars, except for those with high weight or horsepower ratios such as those found in compact and subcompact cars. Maximum grades vary from 5% for a design speed for 70 miles per hour to between 7 and 12% for a design speed of 30 miles per hour, depending on the type of highway. Minimum grades depend on the drainage conditions of highway. So, money ang recommended maximum grades. So, for rural collectors, urban collectors, rural, arteri rural arterials, rural and urban freeways, and urban arterials with different type of terrain. So, makita ni mo ang grades in percentage. My next topic is the special facilities for heavy vehicles and steep grades. Large trucks have different operating characteristics than those of passenger cars. The difference increases as the grade of a section of highway increases. It is necessary to consider the provision of special facilities on sections of highways with steep grades carrying high volumes of heavy vehicles. As the grade of a highway section increases, the presence of trucks become more pronounced. Thus, it becomes necessary to consider the provision of special facilities on highways with steep grades where high volumes of heavy vehicle exist. The most common facilities that address this problem are climbing lanes and emergency escape ramps. So first is the climbing lanes. It is an extra lane in the upgrade direction for use by heavy vehicles whose speeds are significantly reduced by the grade. It eliminates the need for drivers of light vehicles to reduce their speed when they encounter a heavy slow moving vehicle. The need for a climbing lane is evident when a grade is longer than its critical length defined as the length that will cause a seed of reduction of the vehicle by at least 10 miles per hour. The length of the climbing lane will depend on the physical characteristics of the grade, but in general, the climbing lane should be long enough to facilitate the heavy vehicles rejoining the main traffic stream without causing a hazardous condition. It is provided only if the upgrade traffic flow rate is greater than 200 vehicles per hour and the upgrade track flow is higher than 20 vehicles per hour. It is not typically used on multi-lane highways. 
This is the example of the climbing lane. Next is the emergency escape ramps. It is provided on the, on the downgrade of a highway for use by a truck that, that has lost control and cannot slow down. There are four basic designs commonly used. This is the these are the sign pile, descending grade, horizontal grade, and ascending grade. So the sun pile is composed of loose dry sand that is positioned at the end of the escape ramp. Then on descending grade and horizontal grade, this design does not employ gravity in stopping the vehicle rather. It utilizes the increased rolling resistance of the ramp surface that is com that is comprised of loose aggregates. Then an ascending grade combines the effect of gravity and the increased rolling resistance by providing an upgrade and an arresting bed. This ramp design is the shortest of all the design types. In the right picture, uh, this is one of the example of emergency escape ramps. These are my references.